In this Wrestle Talk news, Bray Wyatt teases his future, Buddy Murphy to AEW, my review of last night's Raw, and more. WWE just passed 80 million subscribers on YouTube, making them the number one sports channel on the platform. But they didn't have anybody dancing. Come on, everybody! Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news. We only need 79,193,616 to overtake them. Support Wrestle Talk. Of the now over 100 wrestlers WWE has released since April 2020, the most shocking is Bray Wyatt, who was let go from the company on July 31st, just two days after he was medically cleared to return to the ring. Wyatt has been relatively silent since his release, only replying to a fan theory on Twitter that he foreshadowed his own release on his final Firefly Funhouse segment on Raw back in April with a red circle emoji. Damn Bray, you so cryptic. But yesterday he tweeted with actual human words, posting a zoomed in image of what could be a new design of the Fiend Mask, with the caption, you can't kill it. And that isn't the only thing Bray has been doing on Twitter, as he also liked a clip from last night's Raw where the crowd was chanting, we want Wyatt during the Alexa Bliss match. According to John Alba, who was in attendance, those weren't the only Wyatt chants of the night, as WWE kind of invited some more. Playing a promotional video for Peacock and the WWE Network on the Titan Tron for the crowd in the arena, which featured a snippet of Mick Foley and Stone Cold Steve Austin discussing how great the Fiend character is. The Fiend character that WWE just released. The crowd reportedly booed the clip heavily before breaking out into Bring Back Wyatt. Wyatt charts. Wyatt was actually reportedly originally scheduled to return to WWE on last night's episode of Raw, after being absent from the company since WrestleMania 37, the only match he'd wrestled since the pre-recorded Firefly Inferno match at December's TLC. It appears he was out for an undisclosed medical issue, and WWE held off on firing him until he'd recovered. Which is nice of them, I guess? We still don't know the exact medical issue that was keeping Wyatt off TV, but we at least do now know what it wasn't, as Sean Ross Sapp has debunked claims that it was for a falsely reported mental health issue. Also, Bray Wyatt is 100% healthy and able to wrestle. During this absence, Wyatt was also reportedly working on added creative elements to his character. Gee, I hope it's some kind of supernatural puppet. Wyatt's 90-day non-compete clause will expire on Friday the 29th of October, perfect for a Halloween episode of AEW Rampage. But before then, it looks like Buddy Murphy will get there first. Murphy has now tweeted the full short film he teased over the weekend, which appears to take place at the same institution as Malachi Black's pre-AEW debut film, with them even referencing Tommy End during the video and sharing the same doctor. As Lucha Blog pithily tweeted, is it a bad sign for your workplace culture if ex-employees make so many videos about escape in a jail that it's become a cliche? Not sure. How do you think Malachi Black and the new Buddy Murphy are connected? Let me know in the comments down below because I'll be replying to people for the first 30 minutes after this video goes live. Now it's time for my review of last night's Raw and about from out of nowhere. Thanks for your support on Patreon. The Roller Caster, Robert Caster. And we'll always mark out for Ollie Landrum. You can get your own shout out by visiting us at patreon.com forward slash wrestle talk. The episode opened with the return of Randy Orton from Outer being advertised for last week in Chicago where he never showed up. Despite being on the best storyline on the post-WrestleMania months of Raw, Randy was weirdly just taken off TV for almost two months with no explanation other than, but I needed time to grow this sweet Tash and goatee combo. This was his first time back in front of live fans, rubbish WrestleMania match not included, and he seemed genuinely happy about performing in real life again. Just Orton's presence and Riddle coming down almost immediately to interrupt him, bro, made Raw the most likable it's been since fans came back. Star power, character relationships were actually into, and just a sense of fun that was there from the start, which WWE smartly used as the backbone of the night, setting up the main event of AJ Styles vs Orton, with Randy repeatedly telling Riddle on the episode, they're done, and he doesn't want him in his corner. 
And the fun wasn't done there. Because the quarterly invitational secret brand draft temporary trade wildcard maybe MVPs his manager rule is back with Baron Corbin showing up next. Anyone who grows out their thinning hair for comedy is a special kind of guy in my books. He was here because he needed money, so Jinder hired him to relieve Drew McIntyre of his very stiff sword. Hopefully he got a downside guarantee because Drew beat him pretty easily. Jinder and his goons then stalked down the ramp, but Drew scared them off with his literal sword. Swords are cool. Just ask my local LARPing party. Looking forward to the weekend, Kalgumvuk. But if you're going to have Chekhov's sword in a narrative, the rule dictates you have to use it. And I don't know how you're going to work someone's arm being sliced off. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. Actually, wouldn't mind that. The current NXT champion, Karrion Cross, losing to Jeff Hardy via roll-up on his main roster debut last month might have been one of the worst creative decisions WWE have ever made. Thankfully, if you stick with him long enough, Vince McMahon always rewards loyal viewers because Cross got his win back here. After a fortnight of 50-50 booking against Keith Lee, who was only on a dark match tonight. It was a better showing than Cross's first impression, but that's the thing about first impressions. They're the most important ones and take far longer than one match to recover from. Alexa Bliss then beat Dewdrop because Lily the Doll distracted her by winking from the turnbuckle. A terribly hokey video effect, just cutting to a pre-recorded shot to make it work. Sorry, excuse me, we, were you just winking at, at me? Lily, stop it, I'm recording a review of your segment. You saucy puppet! Okay. This was definitely worth firing Bray Wyatt over. Sheamus beat Ricochet in a spirited US Championship contenders match, which fed right into nobody's favourite will never die feud from four months ago, Damian Priest versus John Morrison. Morrison, literally being eaten by zombies can't kill this thing. Priest won easily and then scared Miz so much in victory afterwards, Miz forgot he was bound to a wheelchair and stood up and ran away. I thought that was a really poor way to pay off Miz being in a wheelchair for months. Thankfully, despite Priest's generic, you're a bully dialogue, he had a fiery segment with Sheamus next to set up their US title match at SummerSlam. It was just two badass fighters shouting at each other over who's the better man. Simple and very effective. Reggie is a TikTok sensation with 33 million views. Some people just want to watch the world burn. And those people are Gen Z. He escaped both a disguised R-Truth and Akira Tozawa backstage. Mansoor got Ali a jacket for their budding friendship, which wasn't very effective, as T-Bar or Mace beat him directly after. Mansoor made the save from the post-match beatdown, mirroring last week's angle. The story is cute, but it's pretty similar to RK Bro. They face the same people for three weeks in a row, and they're losing all the time. Congratulations to John Cena for Suicide Squad being the number one movie in the world. And also to rock the Dwayne Johnson, who has the number two movie in the world. Thrice in a lifetime. MVP put over his injuries from Goldberg's spear, then begs Sunberg to stop his dad coming to SummerSlam because Bobby is going to end his career. At SummerSlam, Goldberg isn't next. He's done. Like I'm done. With this feud. Rhea Ripley and almost a superhero Nikki A.S.H. cut their usual promos before a match that saw Ripley work over the champion for 95%. Then just as Nikki was about to hit an actual move, Charlotte jumped them both for the DQ. We got a video package of Elias burning his guitar and declaring Elias is dead, heavily implying WWE is scrapping a character that uniquely works in front of live fans just a month after fans have come back, and the main event saw Randy Orton take on AJ Styles. They've had some fantastic TV bouts in the past, but this was definitely amongst the weaker, more routine installments. It was mostly about getting over how big Amos was at ringside, ultimately building to Riddle attacking him, letting Randy hit the RKO off a phenomenal forearm to win. Orton and Riddle then embraced and celebrated with the crowd before Randy RKO'd Riddle too. Riddle to AW confirmed. But the RKO wasn't actually hit in a bad guy way. 
if that makes sense. Randy was smiling and cradling Riddle's head at the end. It was the most affectionate RKO I've ever seen. An RKO from out of compassion. Bros fight as much as they get along. And Randy hitting people might be the only way he can show love. It's problematic. Especially tied with the music video montage of RK Bro's story so far earlier on, which was WWE's version of the AEW promo with Kenny and Hangman, this is surely the start of them going for the tag titles at SummerSlam. What did you think of Raw? Let me know in the comments down below. A poll on a poll match actually went for 73% RK No! over RK Bro. This was a fine episode by WWE standards. The Orton and Riddle stuff was generally fun, if a little out of nowhere, and the Sheamus and Priest feud is showing promise. The rest is just meh. So this week's Raw is a three out of five. But Lily, you get a five out of five. Little cute puppet thing, you know, little silly cute puppet. Did you know there's never been a better time to become a pledge hammer on our Patreon page? In case you missed the announcement last week, for the month of August, if you decide to pledge annually, you get two whole months free. This month we'll see mine and Luke's exclusive Wrestle Talk Extra review of SummerSlam 2002. There's Fan Quizzle Mania next week, which you can participate in. The start of a brand new Wrestle League season for SummerSlam and more. So click the link in the description below to check out our Patreon page today at patreon.com forward slash wrestle talk. There's never been a better time. There's never been a better time. There's never been a better time. Tis the season of the Summerfest. God bless us, everyone. Here's hoping that Jeremy Piven visits you in the night and leaves something nice under your pillow, and that's the worst sentence anyone's ever said. We're on the road to SummerSlam, which is widely regarded as WWE's number two show of the year. And speaking of number two, oh boy, there have been some turds in the pool at the biggest party of the summer.